But a lot of people probably believe that, you know, they just want to know and the government want to know what things those people were doing on those tapes and who was doing shit on those tapes. What if the federal government have already talked to Justin Bieber? And did he did that on tape? KCD, I've seen them on a number of times. We were, they were gambling together. They were drinking together, they had fun. They was hanging out in hotels. Yes, they did have a relationship. What's she gonna do? You know the law. The law states is that they subpoena you. You come in and you tell them what you're supposed to. If you don't tell them what, what uh, they ask you questions to and you, you evoke your Fifth Amendment right, you have to, the judge can hold you in contempt and keep you in jail for the life of the crime. I mean, for the life of the, uh, yeah, the life of the, uh, the, uh, the court proceedings. So why would she go through that stuff? She go in there and answer the questions they ask her. Well, I think that he wasn't gonna go, no, they knew where he was at. They got your phones tapped. They gonna stop your flights or whatever. They knew exactly where he was at. I don't think that uh, when they have a warrant, a search warrant for a residence, it's not, a, it's not for a body. If they had one for a body, they would have brought it in. Now, if they would have went there and they found guns, drugs, and Diddy was there, they would have brought him in. You know what I'm saying? They would have brought him in. Like they brought his sons in. And then they want to know, well, why are these unlicensed guns in the house? Um, who drugs do these belong to? All those things like that. But a lot of people probably believe that, you know, they just want to know and the government want to know what things those people were doing on those tapes and who was doing shit on those tapes. Because I heard they, they found like 250 cameras or something like that. Well, in, in his uh, affidavit or uh, his deposition that he gave to the courts, he said every room was bugged. Um, and that he did have tapes and information on a lot of different celebrities and people in the music business, people that were in politicians, and like I said, in other platforms, people that was in the ministry. Allegedly. <laughs> oh, that's crazy. Is it going to be Gene versus Diddy this time? I'm gonna give you something Absolutely. different. And I'm gonna give you something else that people don't even think. On the other day, I seen on the video that Puff had ran into Justin Bieber. They met up and he started tapping him as if he was searching him and see if he had some kind of device on. Did you see that? Yep. Check this out. What if the federal government have already talked to Justin Bieber? And did he did that on tape? That means in his mind, he think this person may be a witness. Right? Yep. What he has just done that is against the law. If they have already talked to Justin Bieber prior to him doing that, he goes and Look like he's searching him. It appears that he's asking Justin Bieber, yo, you got a wire or something like that? Like, you're tampering with a federal witness. That's a charge right there that can land him in jail. Reckless. That was real reckless. Man. Usually individuals acclimate themselves into situations and they do the best that they can do. I just don't think him being a free spirit and off drugs, once he gets into that situation, that he'll handle it 
that well. I could be wrong. A lot of people believe he's going to end himself. Well, I heard him say that before when that city college incident happened. He was talking like that back then. Because he thought it was a possibility that he would be going to jail. He lost his job at Uptown. So, he done a lot of things, been a lot of places. I don't think he has the spirit uh, to be behind bars. P. Diddy is merely not having it when a former close associate of Sean Diddy Combs, and that too his personal bodyguard, is prepared to testify against the rapper as his legal battle continues. He already had drug charges against him. The day Diddy house get raided, they catch him getting on a plane and they put him into custody. Didn't that sound a little weird? People didn't catch that. They either put him in custody for a, a, couple, of, a couple of reasons. You understand? One, to make a witness out of him or to safeguard him and protect him for anything that could happen to him because they had already stated, allegedly, that he was some kind of mule for the people over there at Diddy's house. So now, with that information, that he was already known by the government for drug charges, wouldn't that be an individual that you use? Here's everything you need to know. For Diddy, things keep getting worse in every direction, and Gene is here to make it even worse. See, every day, something new comes out, an alternative take on a previous headline, or new voices criticizing the rapper. But arguably, the most talked about story of all the recent developments was the one about the residence raids. Teams from the Homeland Security Investigations raided his properties in Miami and Los Angeles, leaving many to question why Diddy was not detained during them. If, if it has anything, see, what people don't understand is this, is that having sex is not a crime, but having sex with underage is. Not saying that he did that, not saying that he's a part of that, but if you have done that, it's no statute of limitation on having sex with underage. And in 2011, it was a, a individual that they said there was a drug kingpin that had a proffer, that was offer a proffer agreement. And in that proffer agreement, his name was Jimmy Henchman, right? They asked him, what did he know about Sean Puffy Combs having sex with underage In 2011. So, does, if, if, if they had any information back then, and that's about what, 13, 14 years ago, there's no statute of limitation if they find tapes or they find any information regarding that now. He wasn't yet given a proffer agreement. It was on the table. They had nine different sessions regarding it. And during that time, the federal government came to him and was gonna wipe his crime away, basically, if he would have told them any information regarding Sean Combs having sex, this is what it said, having sex with underage. It's crazy. And even back then, it was even looking into it. Yeah. And I believe that because he lined himself up with some high power uh, people and he started doing business with them, with Deleon, I think I said Deleon, and he started doing business with a lot of different moguls and, and, and hanging out with Robert Kraft, you know, and all these people. 
they 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 wasn't gonna touch him. Sex trafficking is when you are buying or purchasing or selling sex. You know what I'm saying? And you go from state to state doing it, or you have underage coming to state to state to have sex and do sex and loot acts. That's more like sex trafficking, bro. It can't be with somebody that you meet online and you fly them to your crib. Not at all. You call a girl from Wyoming and you fly her in and she, you have sex with her. She, you're not doing nothing against her own will. Right? But if you make somebody do something will. against their own will by drugging them, if you make somebody do something against their own will by, or, 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 or you entice them with money and things like that to do those sexual acts, that's sex trafficking. But just, a, just any woman. That's what I'm saying with, I'm saying with the money. If, if you meet a chick and you're like, yeah, I'm gonna pay you to come hang out with me for the weekend and have sex, boom. That that's that could be considered sex trafficking. But if if if, if you if you paying for it, that's like that's that's a form of prostitution. However, it appears that the mogul won't be brought before a judge until an increasing number of witnesses come forward. And that's exactly why Diddy's former bodyguard, Gene Deal, is quite eager to testify. You heard that right. Gene Deal, the former bodyguard of the founder of Bad Boys Records, has stated that he would be willing to testify against his former boss. And to be honest, Diddy isn't happy with any of it. Wolf just would puff at the parties and at the events. You know what I mean? But Wolf was part yeah. of the crew that gave Puff that startup money. Man, it was so much crazy things going on. And uh, Puff was using her personal assistant to try to find out wherever Jennifer was at. He was sending like a hundred dozen roses. He was trying to get Luther Vandross to sing for her, you know, sing to her. He was doing everything to try to get her back. You know what I'm saying? But she wasn't going for her. I think Jennifer, you know, Jennifer mother didn't like Puff. So when your mother don't like somebody, you know, and Jennifer was real close with her mother and her parents. Her father used to go to baseball games with us and everything like that. But uh, I think it had a lot to do, you know, her mother not liking her. Her mother, you know, felt her life was in danger for being around somebody like Puff. And she wasn't going to uh, risk her relationship with her family by dealing with this kid anymore. That form on the side, but like Jennifer, when she dipped on him, it kind of messed him up. Like, yeah, like, I mean like, he would get out the car and we'll be on 17th Street and we'll walk all the way up to 74th Street to his house. <laughs> Yo. It was crazy, man, the way she, you know, had him and he wanted to get her back, but she wasn't messing with him. Gene argues that he has stated most of his claims already on the internet and would have no problem restating them while testifying. According to what he has revealed so far, he thinks Cassie will also testify if she is subpoenaed after she sued Diddy in a disturbing case that led to numerous allegations of abuse, and sexual assault against him. Gene Deal went on to say that if authorities wanted to question him about Diddy's relationship with Kim Porter, who passed away in 2018 and had three biological children with him, he would be prepared to testify. He was with every chick, every dude, whoever he wanted to be with, you know, when Kim was alive, uh, praying with them, doing whatever he had to do to be with them. And then as soon as she dead, you know, and we don't want nobody, none of our loved ones, the people that we deal with ever to go. You know, he used that as a tool to get to everybody's heart, you know, because who Kim was. You understand what I'm saying? But all that was propaganda. All that said, yo, this is for my mother. I mean, I used to hear you call your mother everything but a child of God. But you could grow, you know, maybe he's grown. Maybe he's a whole different person. Maybe he ain't the same person that 
you know, does what he do, you know, to his artists. Maybe this new artist will get a paycheck. Well, I ain't gonna say mistreating and cheating and all that stuff like that, because nine times out of 10, most dudes only do what women let them do, because when a woman get tired of that, she'll go and straighten it out. And Kim, you know, knew how to handle him. You know what I'm saying? Like I told you, uh, you'll find a, a, a section in my book that'll be out uh, before uh, September when Kim um, when Kim um, cut his wrist. It's an incident that him and Kim had when she took the court school when they were fighting, you know, and ripped his whole wrist up. That's what helped Puff, that's what, that's how Puff got on drugs. You know what I'm saying, those painkillers. Cause Kim wasn't taking it from him. So my whole thing about it is, is that it was always a between those two, physically. But Kim got tired of it and she wasn't taking it. If he put his hands on her, she was going at him. You know what I'm saying? Kim know all his deepest secrets. You understand? Kim knew why he was using the butt plugs. <laughs> Man. <laughs> Kim probably told all that shit in her book. You understand? That up and got missing the day she died. You understand what I'm saying? See, I could say that because I used to see them in action with other couples and other people. You understand what I'm saying? I was told to watch the door. You understand? So. Kim knew all his deepest secrets, bruh. And I don't think he missed her that much when he gave Cassie the same shout out. Cassie, I, what did he say? Cassidy, I love you. Or, or Cassidy, thank you, Cassidy. I love you and all like that. Additionally, Gene has once again stated that he is positive that Puff and Tupac's purported killer were friends, and has made it clear that he is sure they coordinated to have the legendary Californian murdered. Deal went so far as to assert that Keith D was responsible for Tupac's murder. He provided his interpretation of the events in the issue, shed some insight on what he thinks truly happened, and raised the possibility that Keith D was involved in the purported freak-offs with Diddy at a different conversation some time ago. Stop it, man. No, you said a mouthful right there. Bruh, I witnessed they work, they did have a relationship. Keefe D, I've seen them on a number of times. We were, they were gambling together. They were drinking together. They had fun. They was hanging out in hotels. Yes, they did have a relationship. That's no if and a buts about it. That was before me, that was before Zip. Them two had a relationship. Keefe D, and Puff, that's that's known, you understand? So now, um, as far as me having any information whether he commissioned Keefe D to do a murder, nah, bruh, that's not, that, that ain't me. I can say, yo, they can ask me, did I see Keefe D? Yes, I did. Was he around? Yes, he was. In what capacity was he around? Gambling, having fun, drinking, and talking. Did he ever did security? No, he did not. Now, did he use his manpower, his dudes around him, around us, and people could thought they was a part of us? Yes, they were. Yet, Diddy is not happy about all his former bodyguard is revealing. Not to forget, Gene highlighted that Diddy even engaged in gay sexual relations with fellow rapper Jay Rule. In an updated interview, Gene described Diddy's purported meeting with Jay Rule. He claimed that it all began when they headed out of Atlanta to see a show in North California. Diddy informed Gene that he wanted to see Ja Rule in his private suite.